you're listening to a Toad Stolen Fairy Dust reading of The Secret Subway. Be sure to thumbs up and like the video. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in more videos like this. Welcome to New York City, the greatest city on Earth. You say it looks crowded, dirty, disgusting? The streets are filled with garbage? Well, you're right. See, back in the 1860s, when the story begins, there were no subways here, only cobblestone streets. Push carts and wagons rocked and rumbled. Stagecoaches and buggies jounced and jumbled. Horses kicked up dirt and drivers shouted to be heard. People pressed their way through it all, trying not to get run over. And it just kept getting worse. Something had to be done. From politicians to peddlers, street sweepers to scientists, everyone had ideas. Why not make a moving street? so we can get wherever we want just by standing still. Mm, what about building a double-decker road? Or a railway on stilts? But no matter how much everyone talked, 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 nothing ever seemed to get off the ground. Then one day, high above it all, a man named Alfred Eli Beach stared down at the traffic and had an idea of his own. As Beach studied the street below, the wheels in his brain turned. What if he built a train powered by an enormous fan, he wondered. It would travel underground, where there was no traffic or trash or weather to worry about. People would get where they needed to go as if by magic. Beach couldn't wait to get started, but there was a roadblock. The streets didn't belong to him. And since this would be a great, big, messy, complicated job, permission to tunnel under them would not come easily. So Beach hatched a sneaky plan. He would propose building an underground tube to carry mail instead. It wouldn't be that big, and it wouldn't be that messy, and it wouldn't be that complicated, and no one could object. Hmm, a mail tube? Well, why not? people said. Even Boss Tweed agreed. See, Boss Tweed ran New York City, unofficially that is. Beach got permission, but he had more on his mind than mail. Beach rented the basement of Delavan's clothing store. Every day he sent an army of workers into its depths, and every night, after most folks had long been in bed, Wagons pulled up in front of the store. The workers tiptoed out and loaded the wagons with pile after pile of dirt and rocks. For 58 days and night, Beach's men tunneled beneath the cobblestones, up to eight feet a day, until one night the workers ran straight into a stone wall. If they removed it, the men knew the whole tunnel might collapse but they had come too far to stop. So stone by stone, breath by breath, they took the wall down. And when they were done, the tunnel still stood. Now a new army of workers arrived, carrying paintbrushes and plaster, curtains and mirrors. When they were done, Delavan's basement resembled a fairyland. Perfect, thought Alfred Eli Beach. It was time to share his secret. A few days later, distinguished citizens, reporters, and government officials all over New York opened their mail and found an invitation. At precisely two o'clock on February 26, Beach's guests left the city streets and descended into Delavan's. One by one, they entered Beach's spectacular subterranean waiting room. Beach had thought of everything. Gaslights glowed, illuminating paintings and flowers, and a fountain that glittered with goldfish. A grandfather clock rang in the hour, and a grand piano played. There was even a tasty lunch spread out on a table. The guests followed Beach down six more steps into a train platform. 
a single car waited on the tracks. <gasps> Remarkable, marveled one reporter. <gasps> the railroad of the future, agreed another. Oh, the problem of tunneling Broadway has been solved, cheered the newspapers. The first day, guests simply admired the train. But it wasn't long before the tunnel was open to the public and throngs of visitors climbed aboard. With a flourish, an engineer turned on the great fan. Then swoosh! A blast of air pushed the train down the tracks. At the end of the tunnel, the train set off a bell. The engineer pulled the rope and swoosh! The fan sucked the train back again. Beach's train was a sensation. All winter, while wagons slipped and slid on slushy streets above, people poured into Delavan's for the 25 cent ride. It looked as though Beach's plan was going to work. But wait, some folks weren't so sure about Beach's big idea. Shopkeepers wanted their customers to stay above the ground and property owners worried that all that tunneling might not be good for their buildings. Others wondered if it might give Beach just too much power. And remember Boss Tweed? Well, by now, some of his friends had come up with their own plan for a railroad, and Tweed looked out for his friends. The governor denied Beach's request to expand. The underground train was stopped in its tracks. As time passed, the train didn't go any farther. The city's curiosity wore off and the stream of visitors slowed to a drip. Deep down in the quiet heart of the city, away from the clattering and clanging above, Beach turned off the great fan and sighed. Oh well, there would be other ideas. But he had shown New York that one day, people might move beneath the streets as if by magic. By 1874, the train that went nowhere had closed. But many years later, drilling could be heard once again under the streets of New York City. Another underground train, run all electricity, was being built. Workers found lots of surprises as they tunneled. And in February 1912, 42 years after Beach unveiled his train, they ran into a brick wall. When the workers broke through, they found themselves inside Beach's tunnel. There was even a little rail car rusting on its tracks and a tunneling machine perched at the end, ready to lead the way forward. The first official New York City subway line opened in 1904 and New Yorkers have been riding the system ever since. Now, Beach died in 1896. His tunnel was destroyed while making the current system, but the memory of his magical subway station still exists. The end. <laughs>